I have our guest analysts who are with me to offer their perspectives on some of the talking points uh, that we are likely to hear on the show today. Professor uh, Bjordan Adeni is here. He's a current affairs analyst, professor of communications and deputy dean of the postgraduate school at Bayes University in Abuja, and the journalist, political affairs commentator, and a RISE news analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku, is also here. Thank you very much indeed for bridging the gap <laughs> whilst we're waiting for her yeah. to nice be to mic'd be up and get settled <laughs> and all the rest of it. But let me start with you. Uh, Dr. Ikoku, because Shimamada Adichie has been in the news recently. She wrote an open letter to uh, President Biden, published in the Atlantic Daily, um, in which she essentially was saying this election was flawed and don't recognize the person who ostensibly won that election. What is your reaction to that? I mean, since she wrote that letter, or since that letter was published, there have been um, a rush of opinions and reactions, replies from many Nigerians um, on social media and, um, you know, in chat rooms, within homes, you know, some published in newspapers in Nigeria as well. And of course, replies from the spokespersons of the uh, ruling APC. I think that Chimamanda has said nothing new. Everything that she wrote about in that letter is what we have been discussing since February 26th after the election. 25th. Yeah, the election was on February 25th. Yeah, but then and of course the day after. Exactly, yes. exactly. So from the day after, we have been saying the same things. I mean, many people accept the ruling APC and its supporters who have said that the elections went very well. Mm. Not only Nigerians, international observers and people watching from uh, around the world, Nigerians in diaspora, have been saying that they were very disappointed in this election. Chimamanda has international standing. Mm. She has international reputation. She is a very, very bold, brash, young, self-assured woman. And so she has also been vocal in our ele ele electoral discourse and political discourse. In 2015, before President Muhammad Buhari came into power, she supported him. She was one of those who lent her voice to the ongoing debate at that time that good luck Jonathan should leave power at all costs. Nobody wanted to hear about him anymore. Chimamanda said, yes, let's give another person a chance. And then in 2019, I think uh, she didn't support him anymore. So there's nothing new in what she's saying, but it sort of gives oomph to the movement that is ongoing, the movement of people saying that we should not accept this election, mm. especially when Professor Wole Shoyinka had the other day sort of ascribed the word fascism to how the movement has been handling the aftermath of the election. So it's like one for Chimamanda, one for Professor Wole Shoyinka. So the debate is still ongoing mm. and I think Nigerians are very excited and the movement and the young people that are driving this movement are very hawkish. They're not dovish at all and you cannot be dovish because the people that you're dealing with, the APC and the politicians, um, they're not people that will roll over for you mm. and uh, you can take power. They themselves believe that power has to be taken and not given. And so the debate continues. Very interesting. And, and Prof, um, I'm sure you've seen the letter she wrote. Um, she was quite categorical in saying that the electoral process was imperiled, not by technical shortcomings, but by deliberate manipulation. Um, but the, the, she didn't offer any evidence in that article to support that claim. Well, what is your assessment of that? Uh, before then, I think I can agree more with uh, Constance, mm. you know, that she didn't see anything that has, uh, hasn't been said before. Uh, but it's just that in communication, there's something we call, I mean, it's, an, it's a popular mantra or cliche, if you want, that the medium is a message. You know, this time it's just because it has been said uh, by, by Chimamanda, you know, mm. a lady of statue, an international, you know, acclaimed writer, like she said, and a potential Nobel Prize winner, you know. Mm. I mean, so she's got class, she's got voice, she's got image, reputation and everything. And she was deploying that, you know, to highlight uh, what was considered a problem uh, with our election. So, mm. um, but again, we're in a time where there's a problem with truth, 
knowledge and reality. A very difficult time, slightly a time of unreason, um, where our ability to reason has been slightly uh, depleted because of emotion. You know, this is not unexpected, you know, and that's why we keep talking about the need for tolerance and understanding. Otherwise, you know, um, the difference between right and, right and wrong will continue to be widened. At the moment, there seems to be a, a blood, you know, there seems to be a blood between right and wrong, and that's what we're having, and that's why everything is being greeted with emotion. Our intervention is not unexpected, you know, given our status and our pedigree, like Constant said, and of course, writers are usually conscious of nations, you know. They've got voice, they can be very imaginative, very intuitive and introspective. And an intellectual at that, you do not expect her to keep quiet. So she just, she was just performing a social responsibility. Mm. In the context in which I also put our older opposite number, the, the other legend, Wallace Wojnika as well. You know, but the reactions and counter reactions are rather vociferous, which is why we need to continue to call for caution and concern, and, and, and caution really. And where will it come from? I think maybe from elders, maybe from leaders, you know, maybe some definite levels of reassurance, reassurances by our leaders, not um, further making statements, you know, that would deepen the divides, you know, um, that will worsen the, the problem we're having, and that will once more continue to remind us of the differences that have been deepened um, in, by the, in the aftermath of this election. Um, remembering that the uh, outgoing administration also had so many controversies around it, around nepotism, around um, being a favoritism and all of that. And of course, the election again has once more deepened these concerns. You know, that's not um, the law we want to be in and efforts should be made to take us out of this. Right. And that's why these writers are coming in to talk. You know. What, what do we expect from them other than uh, coming in? They are, for me, I see them as civil society individuals. They do not need to be, they've got the status. They do not need to belong to government. They do not need to belong to any social group. You know, but it has individuals, it has single individuals, you know, with just one identity. Their voices are much more than the voices of um, a multitude of people. Right. And that's what okay. they are deploying as an advantage. So mm. we just have to tolerate them. Okay. Um, she's written an open letter. Um, Dr. Ikoku to President Biden, um, published in, in a news, if you like, a newspaper in America. Um, what do you think that is, what impact do you think that's likely to have? Um, I'm not sure. Um, the reason why I say that is that I think most times Africans truly in despair look abroad to the international community or certain countries that they think we have great bilateral relations with to put pressure on our governments mm. to toe the right path or do the right thing. I think this happened severally during military rule across this country, no, across Africa actually. And so there was a time that yes, Western nations who saw themselves as the as the arbiter and the police of the world went on all around the world especially in africa to see if they could institute democracy through the civil society and and deepen the process so at that time that there, there became a real serious relationship between western countries and civil society organizations in nigeria so that the only way that you could actually speak to your government and they will listen is through organizations abroad so I think that's the approach we're still taking. Yeah. I don't know how functional or how, um, how functional that approach still is today. Because a lot of Western countries have since then beaten back, especially America. Yeah, so there is China now appearing on the block in, in, Amer in, in, in Africa. There is Russia, you know, coming on. But those ones are more um, interested in economy than democracy and the rule of or law and what your president does or what they do not do. So symbolically, yes, it's a statement. It's a huge statement on the international uh, uh, community because she has that um, sort of leverage. She has the ears of many organizations worldwide. Yeah. When she speaks, people listen. So even people that have not heard about this would read what is going on in Nigeria. But I do not think that the Americans do not know what is going on. They were here, they, they have intelligence, they perfectly know. And so that would take me to the other argument where some Africans say, these people do not really care about you. 
Americans, the British, care about you only to the extent that they can carry on their business enterprise on the continent and continue to exploit for um, natural uh, resources and minerals. You therefore, as Africans, have to work within the continent and your countries to bring about the change that would sort of lift your countries to where it's supposed to be. So it, it, it's, it's a tough place to be as, as an African, but mm. she is using the means and the channels that she believes will put some pressure on the government of Nigeria to do the right thing. And also with the focus of uh, President Biden, his declared focus that he was going to try as much as possible to foster democracy around the world. Um, the, the idea is that if you are going to foster democracy, then take a closer look at Nigeria. But uh, Prof, um, her, her letter, unsurprisingly, has generated quite a bit of reaction, certainly uh, not least from the uh, APC and Bola Tinubu's team. They've suggested that um, they may go to court over an allegation contained in her letter that Mr. Tinubu may have compromised the chairman of INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu, although she also points out that there is no evidence of that. Um, how do you assess that? I don't think first, maybe we should also put things in context. Um, now, this election has revealed something. We are literally fighting an ideological war, mm. a war of ideas between the ancient and the new, between the past and the present, between yesterday and today. We're talking about um, leaders who represent two broad generations, the old and the new. And that's why you are seeing the argument, the exchange has been very hot, only between APC and P a a Labour Party, as if PDP never contested the election. Because in the subconscious, in the mind of um, the young ones, mm. PDP and APC are the same thing. You know, and of course, PDP, they've also sort of withdrawn and letting the APC and the LP, you know, do the battle. It's a battle of ideas. And when we have a battle, a battle of ideas, you know, it can be al almost be doctrinal. Mm. Uh, you know, such that you wonder if there has been some level of proselytization at some point where people believe, are die-hearted about their conviction and continuously disagreeing with themselves, you know. And that's why uh, mistakenly or controversially the question of fascism came in. But we have to understand that it's a matter of ideas between generations, you know. And of course, Chimamanda represents a generation, the younger generation, you know, who are ordinarily pained, you know, who have been making statements in the past that they want something different, something that will contrast, you know, the old order that we are, um, that we are seeing. And of course, what, we, what, are we, like, what, are, what have we had now with the declaration of INEC? What looks like you know, a cheap, I mean, some, again, from the old order, mm. as the case could be. You know, it's, we, are, we are taking it almost a fit accompli. Preparations are, are being made. If you pass through the Eagle Square, you see preparations are in top gear for the um, inauguration. You know, but even as that, you know, we cannot stop um, these debates. And that's why resort to courts, you know, we just amount to deepening the crisis, you know, worsening the emotion, and will likely be unhelpful, you know, to the reconciliation that we should rather be embarking upon. You know, um, nerves have been frayed, you know, mm. emotions have been fractured in the last couple of months. And what we should do now is rather find, rise above the differences, the anger, the frustrations, and the irritations. Rise above it, it can be tough. But of course, if, you, if we train our psychologists, we can really get this done. Realizing that we are all working or thinking and arguing for the same country, Nigeria, you know. Not, I mean, no, one, no, no one is from Sudan or from any other country here. We are all Nigerians and we are bothered about our country. Poor Sudan. Yeah, it doesn't really... <laughs> It doesn't really matter how loud our voices are, mm -hmm. but we're driving towards the same thing. You know, mm. the growth and development of this country. Tolerance, um, once again, no need for endless resort to courts. You know, we have one in our hands that we are dealing with, and we're either praying that we should reduce how we tribunalize, um, um, you know, uh, elections, you know. Charles, we, we presently have eight states in the off-season uh, circle. And what led to this? Um, to, um, court cases, you know, we do not want to have more going into um, the next round of election. But if we are not careful, you know, in the another six or seven months, we'll be having more, more states dropping into the post, uh, into the off-season circle. Mm. And this is going to be a problem for INEC 
um, for how we define general elections and how we pro a problem for logistics, resource management, etc., etc., and it's going to undo our democracy. And that's not what we want because what we're concerned about is the consolidation and the deepening of our con democracy, realizing how helpful it is in the management of a delicate country mm. like us, you know, where which is, that is plural, fragile, and needs you know, top-notch administration. Yeah, well, some would argue that the process of deepening that democracy needs the presence of the judiciary, because without it, you wouldn't have an essential part of democracy the is the perception the, of justice. Yeah, but at the same time, we shouldn't strain the judiciary. We shouldn't overwhelm the judiciary. As we're talking now... Well, I, I mean, had, if someone is dissatisfied the, with the results, no, no, they no, have to go fine. to We're court. not saying that we shouldn't go there. Yeah. We're just asking for moderation you know, for moderation. Over 400 justices have been said to, they, they have moved over 400 justices to attend to only um, political matters, you know, mm. outcome of the election. And we do not know how this will pan out, you know, cases, um, other cases have been left in the lodge. We do, we do not know their fate as the case could be, whereas they also need some level of litigation, right. some level no, of, I, I of judicial intervention. Yeah. But may maybe what we should be focusing on, although I agree with a lot of what the prof <laughs> said, is also the political parties. Because if you conduct yourself in a manner that is respectful of the rights of the people as well as democracy, then, I mean, the, it will be the most important thing is for people to see that an election is free and fair for it to be shown to be free and fair. And if it isn't, then obviously people go to court. You're absolutely uh, right, Charles. And when Prof was talking about, um, you know, uh, reconciliation and, you know, look, um, I think that someone should lead by example. So when you have a government, there's a reason why you have a government. The government is there to provide service and is looked up onto and is put on a pedestal. Mm. But when that government falls down to the gutter and behaves like that like they're one any other person then it doesn't work that way so let's look at for instance some of the replies or responses that are coming from the apc their spokesperson so for instance uh femi fanny coyote we talked about heating up the polity but look at the language if you do not lead by example i don't know what you're talking about so he he described the letter of chimamanda he said uh, it belongs to the bottom of the public toilet and then goes on to say it's overrated she is overrated egocentric new age diva that's a, an official spokesperson and then bayon nonoga says dear joe biden please uh put just trash the open letter by chimamanda on nigeria's election once it gets to your desk she wrote fiction inspired by the monumental loss of her twice man peter obi and then you have dela alake, alake who says um, that Chimamanda rum, uh, relied on rumors, hearsay, presumptuous conjectures, and outright falsehood. Listen, um, <clears throat> everybody knows the APC. So if you're a party that even your own spokespeople do not act with decorum, do not use a language that is expected of officials of high standing, what do you expect from the other Nigerians? So it's a free for all. And I think most of these young people already know this. From the beginning of the time when, when they decided that we are going to fight to change the old order. We think it's our time. We think that all those people have given everything that they have to give, nothing more. We think that they should all retire. We have to plot out a way to match them, word for word and fire for fire. And that's what you're seeing. Mm. So if somebody does not step up and say, you know what, we are all Nigerians. We are going to do the right thing. You cannot ask someone not to go to court when during elections, um, you, know, whatever, it, you know, the elections were questionable and people feel like they cannot trust the process. If people do not trust the process, the only other option, and you have also told them that the option that they have is to go to court. So they will go to court. It is, it is a shame that at the end of the day, you have so many states that cannot, the elections cannot be conducted at the same time because the judiciary process was dragging. But this is where we are. So how do we not, as Nigerians, decide, especially politicians? I think the problem is not only that of the individuals or Nigerians. It's also that of the politicians and the political parties. They have to rise above board. They have to decide that this country, 
belongs to all of us and we must work in a, a way that is in the interest of all nigerians right not not just them so it works both ways sure you know the okay. responsibility is on both sides well i've got some good news i've been told that um chimamanda adichie has entered the building so they're just now just getting her ready i mean unfortunately it's raining heavily in lagos yeah. and uh, they had to slosh through traffic and all the rest of it to get there in, in time but they're in our studios now and she's being set up as we speak so let's take the next few minutes um because um prof uh, Dr. Uh, Ikoku raised an important point there when she pointed out the reaction of some of the spokespeople who you would think would be above board. And, and I think what is worrying and what fits into the narrative that you gave us earlier, the narrative of concern that you raised, is this focus on the ethnic. I mean, that is creating extraordinary polarization, isn't uh, it? That's really very unfortunate because I think we've got a point in this country where we have to understand the dynamics of identity. You know, mm. that identity is permanently in a flux. You know, it's um, always changing and shifting. And sometimes you hardly even want to bother about where, we, where you are from. You are concerned about where you are at. There are generations of Nigerians who don't remember um, where they came from because they have uh, established intermingled with uh, where they are at, you know. And of course, there are uh, so many corollaries we can cite around the world, the Chinese in Southeast Asia, the Australians in East Coast, in East Coast London, the Germans in Argentina, the Okongas in Canada, and of course, several um, communities in the United States of America. You know, now when you want to remind them of where they are from, it becomes a sad narrative, mm. and of course, it is anti-development. Uh, that's um, where society shouldn't get to. It's unfortunate that we'll go to that, that end, and that's why we keep seeing that an um, election can be very, very um, emotive, you know, but the level at which we can deal with it also rests with the authorities, you know, leadership once again, you know, strengthening the institutions, strengthening the processes, you know, of transition, which is the electoral, the, the, the election, electionary process, continue to improve, you know, the electionary process so that uh, they can be, yes, elections co often come with controversy, but at least it can be reduced, you know, and of course, if uh, there are controversies in the post-election stage, there are ones that you can probably manage through the judiciary, not one, you know, that you find very difficult to manage, and like the one we are having now, because it has, matters are living issues and focusing on personalities. The gratifying thing is that the personalities being mentioned in this circumstance are people who are like dogs. If you pour water on their back, it will just glide off. Mm. And of course, Chimamanda Adiji comes to mind. Wale Suenka comes to mind, you know. Um, and I'm not sure there's anything that anybody can throw at them at this stage. I mean, that would, that would detract from um, their, compliment, uh, their international accomplishments. Yeah. But we have to realize that they have a duty to their society, and it is that responsibility that they are simply executing. Okay. I want to thank v both of you very much indeed. Uh, Professor uh, Abiodun Adeni and, of course, Dr. Constance Ikoku, uh, thank you very much indeed for setting the scene for us. Mm -hmm.